take a lot to drag me away from you There's nothing that a hundred men or more could ever do I bless the rains down in Africa Gonna take some time to do the things we never had Chris, and today we're going to talk about instrumentation. Um, for this video, we're going to cover a couple of instruments, uh, one being the keyboards, one being guitar, one being uke, and one being bass. We're just going to talk about uh, a couple of things that you can do on each and their strengths and weaknesses and how they might change an original piece that you made and make it either better or just different. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about is keyboards. So uh, keyboards, in this case, we're going to talk about um, your normal piano sounds and an electric piano sound. And you can do a lot more with this. You can do synths. You can do a whole bunch of different things. You can get string sounds. You can get clavinet sounds, all that sort of stuff. But we're just going to talk about the two. So if we're talking about just straight upright piano, um, what you'll notice about piano is it has a huge versatility in terms of range. You can play real low bass notes that your bass player will be playing. You can play chords on the inside. You can solo. You can play melody on the top. So for what we were doing uh, for the covers, I was using this for Billie Jean, and I was using a Rhodes sound on this, which is an electric piano sound. And basically, um, covering the bass line that moves in Billie Jean and embellishing on the top with chords and tiny little melodies until Matt came in, at which point I just uh, focused on the chords. So the, the bass line in the actual song is this. <laughs> And what I did I'm basically just filling in that middle part, adding a little bit of melody there, and with a sustain pedal I can get some of those notes to ring out over things to kind of fill out the space. Uh, piano works great in a uh, singer by themselves sort of capacity where it's just one singer and you and you want to be able to cover a lot of ground. Um, it doesn't, its weaknesses kind of lie in its sustainability. So if you're not playing an electric piano uh, and you're playing upright and you want to get a note to really ring out for a long time, say you're doing something like that note that melody note's gonna die pretty quickly, so it doesn't have as much sustain as a guitar would have, or a bass would have, and all that sort of stuff. However, you do have a lot more versatility in terms of range, and you can fill out a sound very easily. Um, the second instrument we're gonna look at today is bass. Bass is uh, primarily a supplementary instrument for rhythm, uh, rhythm sections, so you're gonna be usually using this with a uh, drum kit, 
If not, um, it still does provide a lot of obviously bottom end and warmth and resonance to your mixes. If you're doing this with just an acoustic guitar, you can add a lot of uh, low end and just foundation on what you're playing. So its primary role, again, is to play with a rhythm section and to play with another instrument. There are instances where you see solo bass with a singer or something like that, but they're not as frequent as being paired with a band. Um, in the piece that pieces that we played previously, I'm not playing any bass, but you will see me play bass in a little bit. And what you'll notice is for the first two passes around in the chord progression, I kept it fairly what we would call like a pocket feel, where you're not playing too, too much on it. You can do it like... Primarily, my focus there is rhythm and just keeping everything structured. Um, what you can do outside of that is what I did in the second two bars and make it more of a melody. Uh, Paul McCartney's really great at doing this. There's a lot of really great bass players who are melodic with their phrases. So. Bass is biggest weakness is that you can't play chords. So you can't just have this alone with a voice and have it sound really present and warm. Um, however, it is done. It's not completely impossible, but it's much harder to fill out a sound with just bass. Um, next instrument I'm gonna look at here is ukulele. For this case, we have a baritone uke. Um, for you guitar players, this will be a lot easier. It's basically the same thing as guitar with a uh, two strings taken off the bottom. Uh, uke works really well for chimey stuff cu cutting over the top of a mix. If you have a guitar line that you want something a little bit higher pitched on uh, and you wanted to kind of fill out that sound, uke works really well for that. It also works really well for percussive stuff. So if you're doing... It's a great supplementary instrument to guitar. It's also really great if you have a lighter voice and um, need something that's not as heavy to sit in the mix. Now, last but not least is guitar. Guitar has a lot of versatility. Um, when it comes to guitar, you can have acoustics, you have electrics. They're gonna give you different vibes. Acoustics will give you much more of a full-bodied sort of sound, whereas electrics, you can rely on a lot more for uh, effects. Uh, you can put distortion on, you can put delay on, you can put reverbs, you can put choruses. There's tons of different things that you can do with electric guitar to make it sound almost not even like a guitar at all. Whereas acoustic uh, is primarily the main instrument that people go to when they're accompanying themselves. It's easy to travel with as opposed to piano where you're not going to necessarily have a piano at every open mic that you go to. Um, so learning guitar is great for singers because you can take your instrument with you and it fills out a sound pretty well. Um, on electric, you can have a lot more versatility, too, in terms of adding things on top of mixes. So there are certain instances where guitar is almost looked at as a percussive instrument when it's in an electric guitar format. So say you're playing like Jackson 5 stuff, and you're doing that sort of... Uh, it's almost like a tambourine in a certain, certain aspect. Um, it's also great for leads. You can add melody on top of stuff. In the video for Africa, you can see I'm playing what's called a slide guitar, uh, which is taking a slide and playing those same notes, and it gives it a uh, microtonal sort of quality to it that is really cool and distinct. Um, so in that subsect of guitar, too, of like slide guitar, you can also play with your fingers. You can play with a pick. There's tons of different things in terms of versatility when it comes to guitar. Um, it's downsides. For me, I love guitar, but its downsides is its range. It's not quite as big in terms of range as piano. You're not going to be able to get super, super big bass notes. That's pretty much as low as you're going to go on guitar. Um, other than that, I really like guitar, so I'm going to say it's got a lot of really good, good qualities to it and not a lot of drawbacks. It is kind of difficult to learn how to play, um, but once you get it, it's something you stick with.